Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church, our 10 o'clock worshiping experience where we're doing our best to make disciples by reaching out, loving, caring, sharing, and inspiring spiritual and personal growth. So good to see all of you, to have all of you with us on the day, and those of you joining us online, we're thankful to the Lord for you as well. We do have a few announcements to make, my friends, and we'll move on with our worshiping experience. Of course, yes, we are back in person, and the only protocol that we are still utilizing at this moment is mask. We are still asking people to wear masks when they come here for worship. The only persons who do not have to wear masks are those individuals who are speaking or singing while they are speaking and singing. So when I sit back down, the mask will go back on. So we are still asking people to do that, but we hope, uh, and then of course you can socially distance as best as you can, but we hope that you guys will continue to follow uh, this particular. Now, we are allowing ministries and committees and groups of the church to gather for their meetings inside the facility here in the building if they so desire. We just simply ask that you would fill out an event form, get that to us at least two weeks before your event so that we can make sure that we've got a room set up and everything set up for you. But we are allowing that to take place. Now, uh, groups that are outside of the church who have used the facility before, we're not quite ready to bring those groups back yet. Uh, that time will come, I am sure, but not quite at this moment. Right now, just for those groups, committees, and ministries belonging to the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. If you are still in need of uh, registering or needing help registering for the vaccine, or if you need help getting to a vaccine site, we would ask that you would contact the church office and we will get you in contact with those individuals who can help you during this time. These are some announcements from our music department. The Chancel Choir will be making their return on Sunday, the first Sunday in September, September 5th. And uh, as we have been learning, they are very excited about the opportunity to come back and we are excited to have them return that first Sunday in September. Also on that Sunday, as you all know, um, since we have been in this pandemic and we've been wearing masks, we have been asking you to hum along as the choir or as the praise team leads us in singing. But on that Sunday, we believe we'll be able to have you sing as well, still with your mask on, but you'll be able to sing as well on that Sunday. And uh, as we've been announcing as of re recently, do not forget, the Christmas cantata, we were not able to have it last year, but we will have it this year on December 12th during worship. This is also the time of year, my friends, when we prepare for our next session class. Listen to this. The session class of 2024. 2024. This is what we are in the process of doing, and our nominating committee is working in this regard. Now, if you are interested in serving on the session, or if you know of someone that you would like to see serve on the session, we're asking that you would submit those names to the nominating committee. Those persons are Pat Massingale as our chair, Kelly Tolman, Luma Chenye, Bonnie Watt, and Carol Greenman. Or you can simply submit the names to the church office, and we will get those names to the nominating committee. This is what we ask, first of all, that you make sure that the person that you nominate is a member of the church. That is something we cannot get around. If you're going to serve on the session, you must be a member of the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. And then secondly, make sure that the person has given you permission to submit their name. We don't need any surprises like that. So please make sure that they have said it's okay for you to do this, and then you may submit the names. The session will be meeting on tomorrow evening and we'll be looking at a date for the congregational meeting when we will elect the session class of 2024. But we do need your help in this regard, so we hope that you will uh, be there for us accordingly. Leanne Kerner is on vacation this week and she is enjoying herself, but the only announcement that I have 
from Leanne to make is don't forget the second Sunday in September is when we are planning to have our full Sunday school back in place. So we're really excited about this. We thank, we're thankful to all of you who were able to volunteer to serve as teachers. Every slot is filled, so we're really excited about this new move, if you will, or this return here at the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. Sunday school will happen after worship, not before, after worship, so around 11.15-ish on the second Sunday in September and the Sundays that will follow. Just a few things about our members, my friends, and then we'll move on with our worshiping experience. Uh, as those of you who are on the prayer chain have gotten word already, Madison Avila, who is the granddaughter of Sammy Wood, is having surgery today. Today. So we're asking, of course, that you would continue to keep her and the family in your prayers. Apologies I need to make for on last Sunday. We had a birthday that we left off, I believe, and that was Emily Tasha's birthday. So happy belated birthday to Emily. And then birthdays as of this week, June Fairclough, Cecil Das, Lili Liliana Carey, and Jeff Higgins. Happy birthday to all of you. Well, my friends, now let's worship God. Before the turn, before that, I want to thank each of you that have uh, turned in song requests. We had 45 songs requested for both contemporary and traditional, and I tried my best to fit them all within July, and then I thought, well, let's put them in August as well. And uh, I still have not got to all of them, but I do thank each of you for, uh, for turning in those requests. At this time, folks, let us stand and let us worship in the best way that we can, obviously with the protocol here being in this place, uh, this will be the last time that you have to hum as fervently as you can, all right? So let's do it with some gusto this Sunday. <laughs>
Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come, we come to you once again on this wonderful Sunday morning, lifting our hands, raising our heads towards the heavens, and humbly honoring and glorifying your name. As we are in the beginning part of this worship service, the energy that is in this place, let us, let us be able to keep that spirit as the service goes on. Let us be attuned to what, what the message will be that will be brought to us in many, in many ways. Let us be able to open our hearts, love you, but also loving others, not just within these walls, but outside the walls as well. As always, dear Lord, let us be renewed, let us be restored, let us learn, and let us be able to teach. It is in your name that we pray forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Yeah. 
first scripture. Thank you. Uh, this morning's first scripture will be coming from Psalm 84, of which I will be reading from the New American Standard Bible. For the music director, I want to get us a psalm of the sons of Korah. How lovely are your dwelling places, Lord of armies. My soul longed and even yearned for the courtyards of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for the joy of the living God. The bird also has found a house and a swallow a nest for herself where she may put her young. Your altars, Lord of armies, my king and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Salah. Blessed is the person whose strength is in you and whose heart are the roads to Zion. Passing through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The early rain also covers it with blessings. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them appears before God in Zion. Lord of armies, hear my prayer. Listen, God of Jacob. Salah. See our shield, God, and look at the face of your anointed. For a day in your courtyards is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. He withholds no good thing from those who walk with integrity. Lord of armies, blessed is the person who trusts in you. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. This is the fourth Sunday, so we are in the midst of uh, having our spare change sermon as well. So I'm going to ask Kevin if he would come at this time. All right, so today, as we, as we get changed today, we're going to think about why we get changed. So let's start with a little reading, and it's from um, Philippi Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in the glory by Jesus Christ. Amen. So what does that mean? He's going to supply all that you need. So what's the difference between needs and wants? What's, what's the difference? That's perfect. Yeah, so a need is something you need to survive, and a want is just something you'd like to have, right? So what are some examples of, of something you need? Water. That's a good one. Food, yeah. Food and water. Anything else? Just a couple more things. Air. Where do, you, where do you live? In a house? Or an apartment or wherever? What? <laughs> okay. Uh, what about clothing? You need clothing, right? Okay. So what are some things, what are some things that you want? Like, what's that? Yeah, that's a nice thing. People do sleep on floors, so it's nice to have something like that. Lorelai? Slime? I know what you want. So there's, there's some things. There's things that you want and, and things that you need. And there's some people that have trouble getting the things that they need. And so we do this so that we can get money, help them out, as, as or to help them get things that they need, right? 
So we, we take all that money. Maybe sometimes, let's see, sometimes you say, I want a sandwich. Well, you need something to eat, right? But sometimes you want something, you want something. You think it's going to be the neatest thing in the world. And then you get it maybe for Christmas or something. Maybe it's a, I don't know, a plastic stunt man who likes to jump over things. But then sometimes, you know, it doesn't go as far as it does, you know, on the, on the commercial, and you're disappointed. But it's something you want. It's not something you need, right? So something you need, we need to make sure that we take care of those things first, right? So we take this money, and we give all of our uh, people that are in need, we give them some assistance. We help them. We help them get over humps in life, okay? So do you know who this, uh, do you know who the, the fund is named after? It's called the Gifford Fund. I'll give you a hint. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Gifford, right? And they were very nice, very nice people. They looked out, especially after the kids. So they were always really nice. And so there's a story about Mr. Mr. Ralph, Mr. Gifford. He... I remember they, you said it at his, uh, at his uh, going home, was that he worked so long so that Miss Jan could give it all away. <laughs> right? And so, he, you know, they made, that, they made that their mission. So that's why we call it the Gifford Fund. Okay? And so what we're going to do is at the end of the sermon today, or I mean at the end of church today, um, we're going to have you two guys come and get these and take them out there, and then people can just drop money in. We don't get to walk around yet, but soon enough, soon enough, we'll be back tearing up the aisles. Okay? All right, yeah. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with a prayer today. So are you ready? Dear Lord, please help me help other people get the things they need. And help me to understand the difference between wants and needs. Amen. All right. Thank you, Kevin, Lorelai, and Jude for our spare change sermon for today, understanding the difference between wants and needs. Thank you very, very much. My friends, our second text for today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, beginning at verse 17. But before we read, Yes, absolutely. Bible check, Bible check, Bible check. We want to make sure that you are aware that it is good to bring your Bibles to the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so please join me at John chapter 11, beginning at verse 17. This is what it states, or what it says. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever believes and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. 
do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Amen. If you would please join me in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you today for your blessings, your grace, your mercy, all that you have done. And for this opportunity, we say thank you as well. So right now, make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more and fix us by clearing our minds, opening our hearts, and unstopping our ears so we can hear from you. And upon hearing from you, we want to leave this place better than the way we arrived. Yes, Lord, we just want to be better than the way we were before. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. If you would, please turn to a neighbor, look at them good. And if you're by yourself, just look at me and repeat after me. Friend, today's sermon is called, Hold On, I'm Coming. Amen. Don't talk about it often, and some of you all are aware of it. Many of you may not be aware of it, but I used to be in a singing group. Yeah, yeah, I was in a singing group. Many, many years ago, I was in a singing group. The name of our group was Leap. We took the names of each of our first names, and of course the P stands for parent, and that was the name of our group. We did a lot of R&B songs, and we did some gospel, and we had the dreams like everyone else had of trying to make it big, but there was no American Idol and no The Voice and none of those things that are around right now to try to help people. There was no YouTube either, now think about it. Uh, they try to help people to get over, so nothing <laughs> along that line. But my role in the group was I was the riffer, the riffer. And I'm a fan of riffers, riffers like David Ruffin and Casey Haley and Jennifer Hudson and Joe Cocker and Steve Perry and Kurt Cobain and Al Green, Sam Smith. Anthony Hamilton, yeah, Aretha Franklin. I'm a fan of riffers. Um, you see, riffers have the ability to make you feel and believe what they're singing about. Be it joys or sorrows or tragedies, achievements, whatever it is, the riffer has the ability to make you go there with him or with her, whether you want to do it or not. Hello, somebody. Sometimes you can hear a riffer sing and all of a sudden burst into tears. You didn't plan on crying on that day, but it's just that person takes you there with the power of their voice in song. Uh, matter of fact, uh, don't forget, we got a couple of riffers around here. Uh, Laura and Dorada are both riffers, and we're blessed to have them here in the Lake Highlands Presbyterian church. But in the 60s and in the 70s, my friends, there was a duo, Sam and Dave. Y'all remember Sam and Dave? Some of you have no idea. You think they are your neighbors next door, but they were actually a singing group, Sam and Dave. And they had a song, and in the song they had this lyric, don't you ever feel sad. Lean on me when times are bad. When the day comes, and you're down in a river of trouble, about to drown, just hold on, I'm coming. Hold on, I'm coming. You see, friends, we worship and we serve a God who exists outside of space and time. Before there was a before, there was God. And I believe sometimes we forget this. You see, yeah, God can never be late. God can never be too early because God owns time. As I've told you before, since God owns time, God is always on time. God can't be late. God can never be too soon. And God lets us Know that God is always present. King David put it this way. If I make my bed in heaven or hell, I find you there. So when experiencing life's harsher 
times. Don't panic. Don't give up. Just hold on. For the Lord is there. And the Lord is going to do as God does. Yeah, I think about that song by Sam and Dave. Every time I go to this text, I cannot read <laughs> this text without not thinking of that song. You see, Jesus gets word that his friend Lazarus is sick. Martha and Mary send word to him that Lazarus is sick. But Jesus does not make any plans to go to Bethany at that time. Verse 4 of this chapter says, This sickness, Jesus says, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Through it. If my old man was here preaching on the day, he would stop for this at this moment. He would simply say, in case anybody is getting ready to go to sleep on me. Let me give you this nugget, and then you can go ahead and go to sleep. And the nugget is simply this. If you are experiencing trouble right now, it may not be because of something that you've done. It may be because God is going to use that trouble to get some glory out of it. God needs you in that spot right now so that God will be able to do what God is going to do to get glory from what is going on. So just hold on. God will make a miracle out of your misery. Just hold on. God will turn your tragedy into triumph. Just hold on. God will pull a gift out of your grief. So just hold on. Hold on. God will shine through your sadness and get some glory. So when Jesus does arrive, when he finally gets there, he's told that Lazarus is dead. Not only is Lazarus dead, he's been dead for four years, four days, rather, been in the tomb for four days. And Martha says, Jesus, had you been here, my brother would not have died. She's speaking from her grief. She's speaking from her sadness, from her sorrow. If any of you have lost someone that you love, you know exactly where she's coming from. You know exactly what she is speaking of. And this is understandable. You see, it looks like it's too late, but it's not. It's not too late because of who Jesus is. What's four days to the one who created everything? Hmm? What's four days to the one who turned water into wine and then would walk on water later? What's four days to the one who fed over five? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Jesus wants us to believe in him and in what he can do. Martha loved her brother. She also loves Jesus. And she recognized that Jesus had the power to, to heal her brother. She knew that. I mean, Jesus had already given sight to some blind folks. She knew that he had the power to Heal Lazarus. But she makes the mistake in thinking that death is final. And Jesus can't do anything with death. She makes the mistake in believing that it's too late for Jesus. You know, um, if we're really honest, a lot of us function like Martha. We do. We function like Martha does here in this text. When we get into a situation, we think that our situation is too far gone for anyone to help us, including Jesus. And this is not just about not wanting to ask for help. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being in a spot where you just think help's not going to work. Help's not going to come. Or it can't be helped. You see, Martha and Mary sent word to Jesus when Lazarus was sick. When there was an opportunity for him to get better. 
That's when they talk to Jesus. They send word to Jesus. Jesus chose not to show up until Lazarus had died. You know, Martha's, Martha's jump to conclusions too often because Martha's always operate from a short-sighted point of view. They only seem to see the trouble before them instead of the Christ with them, instead of the Christ in them. Before we knew what trouble was, my friends, don't you understand? Before we knew, God already had a plan. Before that doctor walked into the room and told you whatever the doctor said, God had a plan. Before they came in and told you that you would no longer be employed there, God had a plan. Before those three schools said, well, we are not going to accept your enrollment, God had a plan. It was already established. The old preacher used to say, before the foundations of the world were laid, God knew. God knew you, and God knew what you were about to deal with and what you were about to go through. So if your problem looks beyond repairing, what you see and what Jesus sees are not necessarily the same thing. You see, you see the problem. Jesus is the solution. You see the question Jesus is the answer. You see the disease. Jesus is the cure. And why can't he do this? Martha puts it best. She says that Jesus is the Christ. Hello, somebody. The Christ. The ruler. The one in charge. The Christ. The son of God who has come in to the world. That's why Jesus can do it. That's why Jesus can make that which is impossible, not only possible, but happen. This is why. But during times when the unexpected shows up, the Lord is there. We can call it off guard. But how can you catch the one who is omniscient off guard? How can you catch the one who knows everything off guard? Just because we don't know it surely doesn't mean that the Lord doesn't know it and that the Lord has not made a provision for us. Now, unlike Martha in this text, because of Jesus' sacrifice and resurrection, the world is now a place where the presence of the Lord dwells in the person of the Holy Spirit. This is why I can tell you we're not by ourselves when difficult days show up. We're not alone because the Holy Spirit is always with us. Even on those moments when we didn't see it coming. And not only was I in the singing group, I played a little football, too. Very little. <laughs> Very little. There was no shot, y'all, of me ever going beyond where I was. <sighs> but I used to hate the blindsided hit. That's when you don't see a person coming and they knock you out or knock you over. You don't see it happening. In life, we can be blindsided a lot. But the good news is, the Lord is still there. And the Lord may allow us to get hit from time to time. But the Lord is still there to catch us, to help us, to work through things with us. The only thing that I'm telling you is uh, just don't quit. Don't give up. 
Don't think that the Lord is not there because the Lord is there. Now, we know how this story ends. I didn't read the entire chapter, the entire text, but we know how this story ends. Jesus does raise Lazarus from the dead, and people rejoice. Every time we read this story, that's what we're waiting on, for Jesus to raise Lazarus from the dead, and then we will celebrate. Then we will rejoice. Then the church will shout. But I'm sharing with you today that since we know who Jesus is, and since we know what Jesus can do, we don't have to wait till the end result to say thank you. We don't have to wait till the end result to give God praise. We don't have to wait till the end result to rejoice. Because we also know how the story ends. The Lord always comes through. Should have been about 15 amens right there. The Lord always does come through. All we got to do is just hold on. Hold on. That's all we got to do. Somebody should have told Martha that. You know, somebody should have sent her a text. And said, I know this is hard for you right now, but just hold on. Hold on, Martha, because Jesus is coming. Jesus is on the way. And when he gets there, you will see the Christ in action. When he gets there, folks are going to stop crying. When he gets there, they're going to roll the stone away. When he gets there, you will see Lazarus again. So for you and for me, when the day, when the days come and you're down and when you're in a river of trouble, about to drown, just hold on. The Lord is coming. Just hold on. Because Jesus is a healer, just hold on. Because Jesus is a way maker, just hold on. Because Jesus is a provider, just hold on. Because Jesus will open closed doors, just hold on. Because Jesus will lift up your head. Because he is the Christ. The Son of God. And Jesus can do everything but fail. Everything but fail. We just needs to hold on be blessed today by this word in jesus name amen and amen my friends perhaps there's someone today who has walked in without jesus christ being in control of your life and if this is the case this great invitation is for you perhaps there's someone today who would like to become a member of this church if that is the case, this great invitation is for you as well, and we'd be more than happy to have you as a member here of the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church. Maybe you are a member of a church, maybe this church or maybe another church, but you've gotten off track. You're not living your life for the Lord like you know that you should. Well, this invitation is for you too, to simply start over again, to begin again. And there's no need to be embarrassed about that or ashamed about that many of us in this room many of us watching have had to do it including me time and time again it's a sign of just how gracious our God is but also because of COVID protocols there may be someone who is really needing a moment of prayer today special specific prayer today and if that is the case once this worship experience has concluded I would ask you to let one of the ushers know and they will take you into Shelton Hall into our fellowship hall and I will be there shortly and we'll talk to the Lord together but these inv this invitation is for all who will answer all who need to answer now 
this moment may not be the right moment for you. It may not be. This may not be the right time for you, for whatever the reason is. But if that is the case, I'd ask you to do me this favor. Call me this week, and let's talk. As always, let's find out where you are in your walk with Christ. For be it that day or today, we always want to make sure that it is the day that we get things right between you and the Lord. Amen? Amen. My friends, as we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer on today, there's a lot. There really is a lot that we need to talk to the Lord about that we should have already been speaking to the Lord about. Of course, we want to keep Madison in our prayers on today as she is planning for surgery. But we also want to keep our sisters and brothers in Haiti. We want to continue to pray for them. We have heard from many of the churches that we have in Haiti, the pastors of those churches came through the earthquakes. But there's a lot of damage there. And if you know anything about that country, it was already in a difficult place. This just makes it even that much harder right now. So we want to keep our brothers and sisters in Haiti in our prayers. We want to keep our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan in our prayers. There's a very difficult situation there. People are scared, rightfully so in many respects. And there is the need for the Lord to step in for the Lord to step in and to move as only God can. We need to be in prayer. We're thankful to the Lord for those teachers of our school, one in particular who had been hospitalized because of COVID-19, being at home right now. For the Lord has done some healing, and for this we are grateful. But we want to continue to pray for them and for the school as the school plans to reopen on tomorrow after being closed for 14 days because of the number of COVID cases, positive COVID cases we had. So please keep all of these in your hearts and in your minds and join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Creator God, we thank you today for life, for love, for your grace and your mercy. All that you continue to do for us and through us and with us we say thank you and we ask your forgiveness of the sins we have committed those that we are aware of oh Lord and then those that we may not be aware of forgive us and cleanse us as only you can we ask that you be with Madison today her surgeons, nurses, and be with her family during this time. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will continue to be with your children all over this world who are suffering, who are struggling. 
but especially in Haiti today. Those individuals we know, and then so many that we don't know, but all need your help right now. With your children in Afghanistan, many are living through a situation that they didn't create, that they, that they did not ask for, but now that they must deal with. We ask for your guidance, your deliverance, your power, everywhere, but especially there right now. We ask your blessings upon this church and all that we are involved in, that you have called us to, that you will continue to strengthen us to do things your way and not our own. We pray for the session class of 2024, whoever they may be, O oh Lord, we trust in you for everything that you do and how you do. We ask your blessings upon our nation, the United States of America, but not only this country, again, every country in this world that you have created. And please, Lord, bless our political leaders, always touching their hearts and their minds in such a way that they will seek you before making decisions that affect us all, before making decisions that we must live with. And now, Lord, we say the prayer that you taught us in praying, and we say this prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, how would be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. My friends, at this time, will you stand, please, as we prepare to leave this place and I'm going to ask Jude and Lorelai if you all would come and grab a bucket each and go ahead and make your way to the doors down here. Mr. Kevin is directing you guys. So that we can continue to give to the Gifford Fund and those of you who are worshiping with us online, you can online contribute to the Gifford Fund as well. Now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide in each of us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us on today. It's like